college this week, we're going to have our second annual swamp skiing competition. <laughs> yeah, the way that works is we get a guy water skiing, we go down to the boggy end of the lake there, and we crank the boat around, and the guy fires into the swamp area there, <laughs> and we just see if he can come out the other side. I don't know, Uncle Red, I don't think there's going to be any swamp skiing this year. Oh, really? Oh, yes, really. Because <laughs> you never go, do you? Oh, no, not you. You just sit in the back of the boat and laugh at everybody. <laughs> Come on, Harold. I just got a good sense of humor, that's all. <laughs> no, 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 no. The guys say they're not going unless you go. Because last year, everybody got all dragged through this smelly bog, and, you know, they got all whipped in the face by these sticks and bushes and twigs and stuff, and they got snapped out the other end. They had a face full of mud and a mouth full of algae. <laughs> Took two weeks for the fat guys to pry the bulrushes out of their belly button. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't care what the whiners say, Harold. The, the swamp skiing competition is a goal we've decided. What do you mean we've decided? You decided. All the lodge, me, we, it's all the same. No, see, that's just it. No, it's not all the same. No, 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 no. See, you gotta be careful not to force people into things that you wanna do. Sometimes you gotta give in to a higher authority. Not at the lodge, Harold. I only do that at home. <laughs> Escaping. We got Hap here who escapes into his imagination. We got Bill who escapes into a tree. Oh, sometimes. And I'm escaping into a little freezer den. More about that later on. Well, the swamp skiing preparation has officially started. Just get the lodge members to sign up and then we'll set the date once we know when there's going to be a doctor vacationing in the area. <laughs> Come on, Harold, we got a show to do here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Uncle Red. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was just outside talking to Junior Singleton. Yeah, all right. You know, he's still pretty upset with you, you know, because the way you have to run things around here, he's very upset about that. He wants to get together and talk. Oh. Bring him in right now. We'll talk here. Oh, no, no, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't clarify that. I'm, when he wants to get together and talk, uh, you know, when he speak, you know, yeah. the way people, the way, way they talk like that, yeah. is what, what he said when we said we get together, it, when he meant we, yeah. not, not we, like me and he, not you. Oh, so, so you're going to be meeting with Junior? Yes, just Junior and me, just okay. Junior and me. Yeah. All right, hope five other of the Lodge members, maybe ten. <laughs> What's this about, Harold? Well, you always get a say in what goes on around here. You know, a lot of people have got some ideas, too, and some pretty darn good ones sometimes, but you always say no, right? No. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, just like that. What about that time we wanted to get Lodge jackets, and you said, no. And what about the time all the guys wanted to go to Port Asbestos and see the new asphalt spreader? You said, no. What about the time we wanted to get snacks with better expiry dates? You said, no. <laughs> well, Junior got thinking, he's tired of hearing saying no, and maybe he has an idea that Junior had this, really. This is more Junior yeah. speaking than me. It just, I'm channeling at this point. Yeah. And uh, he, he's thinking of starting up a rival lodge, and a lot of the uh, Possum Lodge members are going to go with him. Well, good for Junior. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Can we have our first meeting here? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got your book, you hear the knock, but you don't care, the door is locked. Let them pound and yell and scream and shout. You know what they want, you know what they need, but you got their first with something to read, and they'll just have to learn to do without. The John is the only place where a man can put up his feet and turn on the fan and read a book and know what it's actually about. Oh, but don't let it go to the bitter end, because every five minutes you lose another friend, and they'll be all be waiting to kill you when you finally come out. It's the Possum Lodge word game. And this week, Mr. Mike Hammer's playing for the grand prize of having his charges commuted to 30 days of community service. Oh, Mike, yeah, yeah. Good, good luck, Mike. Mike. Oh, Alrighty. Go for it, man. Go for Mike, it. you have 30 seconds to guess this word. And the you're peeking. Don't be peeking. All right. Oh, yeah? Okay, all right. The word is... He's looking, and he's good. Okay, okay. You know what? The word is cheater. Cheater. Go. 30 seconds, go. All right, Mike, this is something... Cheater. <laughs> all right. Okay, Mike, you put a lot of time and work into this, but it pays off money in the long run. A bank robbery? No, 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 no Mike. You already have money. No, I don't. I would just imagine that you do. Oh, okay. Okay. So you need to make a... Quick getaway? No, no, no. No, 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 no
I'm like, this isn't money from a robbery. You earned it. Oh, like a reward when you uh, squeal on a guy, right? Yeah. All right, all right. So you want to make sure you have that money when you get older, so you need to find a good... Handgun. <laughs> Mike, you're on parole, okay? You can't use a handgun. No, 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 I wouldn't use it, Mr. Green. It's, a, it's sort of an investment. Oh, boy. <laughs> You know, every man needs a place he can go to in his own home. Kind of a refuge where he can be alone to do what he enjoys the most and what he does the best. Nothing. No talking, no sharing, no moving, no thinking. Now, some guys, they have a den or maybe a basement workshop. Some have a garage or even a barn they can go to. But this week on Handyman Corner, I got a project for the man who has absolutely no space at all. <laughs> You ever notice how lazy people live in small houses? That's because you don't need much space when you're not doing anything. You don't need a whole room to go to. All you need is an old freezer, huh? Wouldn't that be a great spot to go to to cool off? <laughs> you get enough accessories in there and you could turn this unit into the den of your dreams. You know, carpenters have a very important saying. Measure twice. Cut once. That's a good theory, isn't it? <laughs> You've never actually done it, have you? Well, this is no time to start, because this is an airtight freezer here. If all of your cuts are accurate and your measurement is correct, it could kill you. So throw that cup away. All right, what you want to do is you want to cut a hole, yay by yay. Maybe a little more yay this way than that. All right, the first thing you want to do is drill a hole in the side of the freezer so you can cut out where the TV's going to go. No, 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 that's the second thing. First thing you want to do is unplug the freezer. There we go. That's a perfect fit. Remember, no gap, no air. And you want to hold it securely in place there using the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. Because if you drop your TV into your freezer, it's not covered by either warranty. All right, once you got your TV mounted on there, you gotta start thinking about beverages and snacks. So get yourself uh, one of these units here, something along this line. What you wanna do, mount that on the side of your freezer so they'll feed down into the den area. All right, once those are mounted on there, you put your favorite beverage in the cooler and it goes down the tube. You put your favorite snack into the duct and it goes down the chute. Now we got this old dustpan here to control the snacks and we got the uh, clothes peg on there to get the uh, drinks coming and going. Now, for that extra touch of luxury, I'm gonna line my den with the foam here and then cover all that with the shag carpeting. So it'll kind of be like a van, but no women. So it'll be like my van. <laughs> All right, that's got it. Now I just got to make a little adjustment to the door switch here. And that way, when I retire to my den, I will close the door and the light will stay on. All right, here's another little rig that I've added to her. I've uh, put these legs on the back here, and this allows the whole unit to recline. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Oh my gosh, wrestling's on. Okay, so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Now recline. Wow, it's like I'm right in the wrestling ring. I want to talk to you older guys about something you haven't done in a while. Change. Okay? People say you're out of it because for the last 20 years you've been dressing the same way, talking the same way, and thinking the same way. I say good for you. You stick with it. Somebody's got to stand up for tradition. And hold firm, because too much is changing. The phone rings weird now. Running shoes look like spaceships. Even the continents are shifting, but not you. You stick to your guns. You keep wearing those short sleeve polyester dress shirts. You keep spouting your opinions to anybody who will listen. Somebody's got to preserve what's normal and sensible in this world. And who knows? Polyester might come back. Maybe your opinions will catch on. People will think you're a genius. But so far, no change. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Now the swamp scheme is getting off to a slow start. 
I got the boat gassed up and I got the tow rope on there ready to yank somebody into the quagmire down the far end of the lake. <laughs> but so far, I got no customers. I can't figure it out. You know, Uncle Red, I think I know why you're not going to have anybody for this swamp skiing. The guy's wives all find out about it? No, no, no. It's Junior Singleton. All the guys are listening to him now. There's loyalty for you, huh? Has Junior Singleton started another lodge, Harold? Oh, yeah, 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 very much so. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And he says, if we join, if we join, we can get, like, lodge jackets. <laughs> you know, like, like, like maybe the ones the baseball players wear, those silk ones the rock and roll stars wear. <laughs> That'd be great. And we're going to get, like, membership cards. Oh, we have membership cards now. Yeah, but cheapy plastic ones. These are going to be, like, nickel alloy with my picture in the hologram. Harold, your head is already a hologram. <laughs> See? See, Junior wouldn't insult me like that. He says that's the possum way. That's so possum. Salamanders are going to do things differently. Salamanders? Oh. <laughs> Salamanders? That's the lodge called Salamanders? Yeah, well, Salamanders are cool, too. Uh -huh. But, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go to that first meeting and check it out. That's all. I'm just, you know, checking oh, yeah. it out. What is Junior offering you to join her? A digital editing suite, and it is so beautiful. I would have everything! Harold, he's only trying to buy your support. Yeah, I know. You want to make a counter offer? I'm a free agent. Harold, you're a free willy. <laughs> uh, this week we're going back to when we were just kids again. Kind of a kind of a laugh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go through it again. Oh. My golly, good start. Good start. Yeah, Bill wants to wants to build a tree for it. It's up in the tree. We've got the tree, and we got the wood for it. Bill, you know, I don't think you're gonna be able to build, I don't. Oh, he's got an idea. Got an idea. He's gonna climb up on, climb up on me. I, think I saw something like this in one of those movies. One. No, no, I was, no, no, I was, no, no. All right. Yeah. So he's standing there. He's a heavy little fella. There he goes. All right. He's up. Finally, he's up. I can relax. There, I look relaxed. All right, uh, Bill. And another plan. He's up the tree. We don't have a ladder or anything. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, Bill? Another idea? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take the two by four, up against the tree, and then what do you? Oh, he's gonna. Okay, all right, all right. Gonna make steps. Gonna cut it up. And make steps. There we go. There we go. A series of steps. Oh, oh my golly. All right, Bill. Now, now this is something you youngsters shouldn't pay attention. This is like, uh, this is what happens when you have budget cuts. That's just dumb. All right. Oh, okay, okay. The hippity hoppity web. There he is. There he is. There he is up the tree. There he is. Oh my god, that's quite a luck, dude. Look at oh! There's the hammer, Bill. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh. Uh, later that day, uh, we're handing the wood up to Bill, and he's gonna these have all been pre-cut to the width of the tree fort that he wants. He's got a bunch of putting the spikes in his uh, put the spikes in his mouth. Stop him from talking a little bit there and just start drive really drive that, drive that. Oh! 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 Oh, ow, ow! Oh! Oh! oh. I don't have to worry about the wind. All right, so he's uh, kind of chewing and being preoccupied. He's chewing. Bill, you're chewing on the nails. Bill, you're chewing on... Bill, you've eaten the nails. You've eaten them. They're gone. You ate them. Yeah. 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 Oh, my. <laughs> Getting enough iron in the diet, are we, Bill? Boy. Oh. Look at, oh, my gosh. Coughed up a nail. Huh? That was a party. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Well, by golly. I like this. Hey. Eh? bowl of chili and a can of nails, you can build a cottage. Ow! <laughs> all right, he's got the thing done, and uh, there he's got his platform, and he's all set. Look at him. Now, that's, there's the pride of ownership right there, huh? Sit there. I, did you, uh, Bill? Oh, 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 my golly, she's an ambi swingstress kind of a tree fort. Oh, the branch is letting go. Oh! Boy, that's going to leave a mark. Well, let's see if the sap is running. Oh, it's kind of more of a kind of an ooze, kind of an ooze kind of a look there. Where's your neck? Oh, there it is. All right. You're going to pay for that. Man, this new Salamander Lodge has really thrown a monkey wrench into everything I'm trying to do. Harold, guess how many guys have signed up for the swamp skiing competition? Sure thing, Uncle Red. Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm going to add a special event to it. Harold is going to do a cannonball off the top of Rock Reef Point, singing the national anthem, Buck Naked with his hair on fire. <laughs> that okay with you, Harold? Oh, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, I don't know the national anthem. <laughs> Salamander meeting tonight, Harold? Maybe. Uh-huh. 
Have you learned the secret salamander handshake yet? Working on it. Memorizing the motto, are you, Harold? Oh, yeah, you know, but you know how long it took me to memorize quantum omni flunkus mortati? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is the salamander motto there, Harold? I will never tell. I've been sworn to secrecy. No, no. Is that a spider there? No, it isn't! It's a <laughs> On you? <laughs> Quando omni flunkus terra retreatum? Mm. When all else fails, climb under a rock. All right. You wait here, I'll go get a rock. <laughs> I want to talk to you teenagers, because I know your parents are after you again to clean up your room. Huh? They're in your face, eh? as you would say. Because that pile of laundry, and junk food wrappers, and comic books in the center of your room just developed a heartbeat. <laughs> or maybe a pair of your gym socks got together and had pups. <laughs> and your dad, of course, is warning you that that room proves you're headed for a life of total failure. And you're thinking, he would know. <laughs> hey, kids, instead of arguing with your parents, outthink them. It's a lot easier. <laughs> Tell them the uh, hottest field in science today is your chaos theory. And you're on your way to a PhD. <laughs> Those aren't dust bunnies under the bed. Those are your prototypes of fuzzy logic and scuzzy drives. <laughs> and that smell coming out of the closet, why, that's your alternative fuel project, huh? You're gonna save the ozone layer. Maybe not the Earth's ozone layer, but at least the part over your laundry hamper. <laughs> and the new antibiotics, they all come from mold. So you're not a pig. You're a creative genius. I don't know. I'm a regular Einstein myself. Welcome to the experts portion of the show, where we examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> okay, excellent. Joining my uncle Red on the expert portion of the show today is his best friend in the whole wide room, water taxi captain Pat Jonasy. We have a viewer in Georgia who asks, dear expert, uh -huh. uh, I'm a bit self-conscious about my height. I'm not short, just vertically challenged. <laughs> Recently, I read that astronauts actually grow in space by as much as an inch. Is that true? And if so, how can I get into space? Oh, no, no, I don't, I don't think people grow in space. I met that William Shatner, and he's hardly tall at all. <laughs> well, actually, Red, most people do grow in zero gravity. I don't, but most people do. You're in space where you have? Oh, well, no. Space starts at about 90 miles up. I only flew 88 miles up. And uh, what were you flying in? A cape. Like, like Superman? Huh? No, not like Superman. Mine was white. You know, uh, uh, this, is, this is a bit of a stretch even for you, I'm finding. Well, I was with the local circus, half the human cannonball. We were performing in Port Asbestos, and just as I waved goodbye, I slid down the tube, a bolt of lightning hit the cannon, and boom! The blast was so strong and the wind was so powerful, all my clothes were torn off. I was, I was totally naked. Luckily, I was 88 miles up, so no one could see. Did you know, did you know Australia is in the shape of a dog's head? Uh, you know, uh, not too much air up there, I wouldn't think. You know, I, just, you know, I, I, know, the, I know the airplanes fly at four or five miles up only. And they have to actually pressurize the cabins so that people can breathe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Air is very, very thin up there. Oh, yeah. Luckily, I was traveling so fast, I just opened my mouth and, and scooped enough oxygen in to keep my... Uh, <laughs> keep my consciousness. Yeah. My real worry was the landing. I mean, I'm 88 miles up, eh? Going a mile, going a, mile a second, speeding head first towards Earth. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess the impact would, you know, pretty much lose whatever height you'd gained. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I got lucky, Harold. I blacked out so I didn't tense up for the landing. Oh, okay. uh, uh, when I came to, I was just outside of town on top of a haystack, buck naked. Wow, excellent. <laughs> naked. 
You buy that story, Harold? Not really, no. <laughs> you know what? Neither did his ex-wife. <laughs> Possum Lodge members are over at the Salamander Lodge meeting tonight, uh, which is fine. You know, I cer <laughs> certainly have nothing against those traitorous two time and backstabbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so uh, no sense hanging around, I guess. So, Bernice, if you're watching the show, you're, both, you're the only one around. <laughs> oh, 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 my golly. <laughs> Salamander meeting uh, over so soon there, Harold? Oh, yeah, 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 you know, uh -huh. well, yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't going to join anyway. You know, you can just forget the whole thing. Forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just went in to check it out, see what it was all about. You know, I just, I was going to join and show my disdain. Oh, yeah. I was doing a whole disdain thing. Oh, really? Because, you know, I had the distinct impression you were going to be a salamander, Harold. You already got the beak and the cold, wet skin, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Maybe I was going to join. Yeah, 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 maybe I was, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. But then Junior started going on about how much it was going to cost to join a silly lodge. Yeah. You know, and then he started telling us how much it's going to cost to buy those jackets and all these fancy pants membership cards. Yeah. Then he starts handing out duties about who's going to be doing the cleaning. And he's got ethic codes and, and dress codes. <laughs> well, we were pretty much out the door by that time, Pally Rally. <laughs> Okay, it's meeting time. We're having a meeting? Oh, yeah, everybody's back. Oh, well, that's all oh, great. Okay, you go ahead. Hey, here, see if you can get the guys to sign up for the swamps. I've already put my name right at the top of the list there. Oh, Uncle Betsy, I'm so proud of yeah. you. That is very yeah. good. You really learned something from this experience. Well, don't get carried away. I wrote it in pencil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you go, then? I'm... <laughs> If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and we got no money and no agenda, so it should be a quick one. But you know, with me, sometimes the quick ones are the best ones. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. Behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here, Bob Mudd. Keep a stick on the ice. Okay, all right. Oh. <sighs> Bondo on the flock of smart eyes. Sit down. <laughs> okay, our first announcement. Um, the next secret society meeting is a goal. Uh, code name Aqua. Uh, there will be an open discussion of Operation Rash Remover. Uh, special guest speaker, Deep Water. The meeting will be held at location A7. 